we are proposing a curb cut off of Herf Road. Um, it's going to be a right in and right out. Um, we are meeting impervious cover requirements of under 80%. We, as you can see here, we have, let me switch to, uh, let me open up a uh, landscape here. All right, so we have landscape planning. We have a 30 foot utility easement um, at the front of the lot. So it's gonna be some nice green space up at the front. Um, which is going to accommodate a lot of the landscaping. So we're gonna we're gonna accommodate the luscious luscious green natural look with uh, screening, natural screening here at the front. And just as we show in this image here, um, and that's that's the purpose of the request. We are requesting an automobile service facility, no storage, off of Herf Road. And we are open to thoughts, questions, anything that you may have concerns of. I have a concern. Go ahead, Nina. Um, first of all, um, this is absolutely nothing against your business. I'm sure you would be a, a wonderful community uh, partner. Um, however, when Herf Road was designed and we were looking at the future of what that area would look like, this was back in 2015, uh, the community came together there were numerous public forums. It involved residents, it involved uh, the landowners, it involved local architects, local business owners. And the whole process was to come up with, because we knew the road was going to be constructed, to determine what we wanted that area to look like. And as you know, there's apartments there now, uh, right around the corner. Um, I don't know the start date, but there were some townhomes um, approved to be constructed there. But the whole concept of that area, which was called Sobo, was to be a retail, office, restaurant, residential that would uh, be walkable. We were going to extend the, the trail system to utilize Minger Creek. It was supposed to be an area that you could basically pull in, park your car, take care of any um, commercial business that you had to take care of, uh, do some retail shopping, and then stay and eat and be able to walk everywhere. Um, we were trying to get away with having to drive and, and um, so many and so many curb cuts off Herf Road. That was the main thing. We didn't want to see numerous curb cuts. Uh, so we the whole concept was to be able to pull in, park, and walk to the businesses and uh, not have so many curb cuts and, and destruction of the traffic along Herf Road. So, and in all honesty, it was proposed to the community. The community welcomed it. This is what they wanted to see. And this goes against everything, not only what the original Sobo concept was of that area, but our Bernie master plan, our UDC, you're surrounded. Uh, you've got residential behind you. 
you're going to have residential around the corner from you. Um, automotive service center, this is my opinion, but I think it's, if you go back and look at the master plan, the UDC, it belongs in an area that um, either highway commercial or an area that um, would be more suitable away from residential. And that's, and this is nothing against Christian Brett. This is nothing against the plan. It's nothing against your business. It's just in this area, it goes against everything that that area, the concept of that area was planned for. Okay, yes, ma'am, Nina, thank you for chiming in. We hear you loud and clear. Um, rest assured that still is the vision for this, this master develop area. Just to give you a little bit of foresight, um, I have a an overview of our, our concept plan, which is which is pretty much a replica of the approved MDP. This was the, the master development plan um, back approved back in 2018 in February. Um, and as you can see, it's got a number of uses here. We've got single family, multifamily, high density residential, office, restaurant. So you, you're correct. You're hitting it dead on. Um, so fast forwarding to, to today, this is, um, so the tract has been subdivided into various units, um, to help accommodate, uh, approvals and, and city permitting and those types of things. Uh, but like I said, just to give you some foresight, zooming in here, uh, let's take a look at the south side. So on the south side of Herf Road, we've got Unit 7. It's just light colored purple here. Um, okay, so uh, Lot 7A. So this Lot 7A is planned to be an HTO. There has been um, some city approvals and some some a lot of footwork already going on. HTO is coming in here. Uh, we work closely with with the owner, the seller of this tract. Uh, this lot here has plans to be a Chipotle. Uh, this is going to be a Chipotle. This is supposed to be an HTO. This lot here, um, I believe he is putting forth effort to try to sell. Still, um, this lot here, Unit 11, this is going to be um, two-story shopping is my understanding. Uh, we are working closely with the architect, Endura, um, and their plans. They have a, a site plan footprint for some two-story shopping facility. Okay, moving over to Unit 8, this green area here. This is going to facilitate the majority of the the eateries and the scenic um the scenic trail so the trail system is going to run along the backside and hug minger creek here um, the trail system is supposed to come along this way here and traverse west um, is what what some of the plans that we have show but the overall footprint for for this almost eight acre tract here is going to be I took a look at it yesterday. Um, it's still in the works, but we're looking at six to eight different establishments of um, food chains and those types of things. So the south side is still has that vision. And with, uh, with the work that I've seen put forth in, that is right on track with, with the community's vision still and, and what we uh, had planned for this area to be back when, which you're referring to. Um, so that is the south side. So looking at the north side here, uh, this gray area is going to be unit nine. Um, and that is still in the works. Uh, the owner is still trying to sell these these lots. Um, so we don't have a footprint yet and what type of uses are going to be coming in here. But I'm confident that they're still going to have that same South Bernie vision. Um, we have had some, there has been some effort put forth for 
um, because as part of the the special use permit that we request, we we need to go and present to P and Z, and then they they present to council, and council is a. Uh, the uh the overall governing body that's going to make the decision as to whether or not we can have that permit but prior to that we have had a number of uh sub meetings if you will and they uh they are not opposed to it um they do have some of the same concerns that you do and there there are some more meetings scheduled uh, one of their main concerns our uh, mobility and, and pedestrian safety in and around Herf Road. There has been some talks at the previous meeting of uh, establishing like a, a, a shuttle service, possibly to get you to the south side for all the, the eateries and that type of entertainment here. So there there is a lot of footwork still in progress. Um, it's just one of the one of the very first lots that's that seems to be going other than the HTO and the Chipotle does happen to be this Christian Brothers lot. Um, but rest assured, we're confident it's it's not going to disrupt the overall vision that was was sold to you guys in the past. Um, well, that... um, I, I mean, I appreciate everything that you're saying, but we just went through a long, arduous UDC update, and the community weighed in heavily on that. I mean, it, it was several years in the making, and one of the main things that came out of all of the UDC updates was protecting residential this doesn't you're backing up to residential and quite honestly an eight bay automotive um doesn't fit next to residential i'm sorry and the reason that you're zoned what you're zoned and why um you have to get a special use permit is for that fact and I, I i mean i appreciate all that you're presenting your schematic looks nice but the bottom line is it's still at the end of the day an eight bay automotive service center that um will only back up to residential. Everything behind you is going to be residential, whether it's multifamily or townhomes. Um, we've got a senior living facility back there, but it's all going to be um, residential. I, that's my only, it just goes against everything that the community has weighed in on what they want to see. But I appreciate your presentation. Yes, ma'am. Before you guys talk, uh, somebody that I don't know has a, a question on the chat is how much sound will this business bring to the area? Uh, pneumatic tools, intercon and air compressor, air compressors, et cetera. So they have some questions about the noise pollution. That's, that's a good question. So Cynthia, I don't know if you want to chime in. I do know that you guys mostly focus on, um, just typical and basic oil changes and and things like that. You're not doing any heavy engine work, any body work, um, no kind of engine swapping. So my understanding is that your noise level and and your overall footprint um, on that regard is is not going to be uh, disruptive. Um, that's Mark. my understanding. Hi, Mark. This is Cynthia Murphy with Christian Brothers Automotive. Hi, yes, you, you are correct. And we actually have numerous stores across the country. We have about 280 plus stores. 
and we have several stores that are located near daycares, schools, et cetera. So noise has, has not been an issue for those locations. Right. And, you know, with landscaping and, and as you can see here, we're, we're confident that noise pollution is not going to be an issue with, um, you know, like you said, pneumatic tools and, and those types of things, as you can see, you know, they're, they're, these are some existing, okay, these two are the same. They're, uh, you know, Christian Brothers is no stranger to in and around the town. Well, I guess in the town, yes. Uh, but around, you know, they have very nice, beautiful architecture. Um, and we just feel that they're going to fit right on in. Um, but as far as, as far as noise pollution, um, and also their operation hours. Cynthia, what are your operation hours? Um, you mostly operate business hours, Monday through business. Friday, 8 to 5? Yes, Monday through Friday, really 7 to 6 uh, are pretty standard hours. Um, the franchisees have the option of opening the first 90 days on Saturdays, but typically that's their decision. But our normal working hours are Monday through Friday. Okay. Yeah, so at quitting time, it's it's shut down. You know, there's not going to be any light pollution, any noise pollution. It's typical business hours. But we do we do hear you loud and clear. Um and rest assured, you know, we we completely back up Christian Brothers desire to come in um and help bring bring this town and this area alive. Hi, this is Sharon Wright. Um, I have a couple of questions and observations. Um, <clears throat> so I, I hear what you're saying about, you know, not operating at night and that's wonderful for people that are commuting and um, come home in the evenings, but there are people who are home during the day. And I see the on the website, some of the other services are um, break, uh, brake services, things like that. So there will be, uh, you know, pneumatic tools taking tires on and off. And then um, the, ha the requirement to turn the horn going in and out of the bay, eight bays, that, that could lead to some noise uh, and irritation for, potential irritation for people that are home. There's a lot of people who work from home these days, so they're not necessarily commuting to the office. But back to Ms. Wollard's point, um, you know, the vision for that area, you mentioned the eateries and the walkability areas, and that's all true. I used to live in New Braunfels, Christian Brothers was there on Highway 46, which was uh, a highway commercial use. Um, and they were, you know, great facility. Um, my family has used them. Um, but again, in the midst of a commercial area, uh, I also share Ms. Willard's concern about um, a driveway, a curb cut out for uh, her road because that, um, my understanding is that area expressly, the community didn't want the issue of cars coming in and out of a driveway onto the road, which is why the idea for park and walk and hang out in that whole uh, different, you know, that whole facility area. I, I just don't, I don't understand how a, an automotive company as wonderful as Christian Brothers is, um, I just don't understand how that fits into that area and um, how to address the concern of people coming in and out of the driveway and some potential noise issues that I had mentioned. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, we hear you. Um, 
So as far as the the driveway, I want to say these driveways have been part of the MDP. Yeah, see, we have them. Um, so back in 2018, they were proposing a right in, right out in here. Um, and that's that's some time ago. But, you know, that's not, not to minimize your concerns. Um, we do hear you and we do understand. You know, maybe we can help mitigate that with some, you know, with some additional natural screening, you know, some some tall screening walls and and um, just just to help mitigate that noise um, and this driveway. So there has been an improved traffic impact analysis and uh, that is going to be at full build out. So all these lots you know eateries buildings different kinds of uses has been has been uh, studied and, and looked at and we do show that a, a right in and right out and that's with these cul-de-sacs to the north and to the south right in and right out aren't going to cause any kind of negative adverse impact to traffic that has been previously studied um but again like i like i said not to minimize your concerns we we hear you loud and clear on um, maintaining the, the original vision with this. I have another question, if I may. Yes, um, how are you going to contain all the oil and any chemicals and everything that's related to car repair? Because you do have Minger Creek. And there's another creek right behind you that runs right along uh, back behind Hertz and between Walmart and snakes around. Mm -hmm. How are you going to, what is your containment for all the oil and chemicals that you're going to be utilizing at this facility? Um, so the, the site, the establishment Christian Brothers Automotive is going to utilize what is called a sand oil interceptor. It is pretty much an underground uh, containment basin that um, that traps all kinds of, of the runoff and pollutants from from the impervious cover, which is, you know, the concrete and and. And that kind of stuff, it's going to flow all into uh, basically a big filter and filter out those pollutants. Um, and that is going to be um, integrated with the sewer system. So it's going to be filtered out, essentially, and then it's going to enter the sewer system. And the site's going to be graded, meaning, you know, we're going to we're going to do the dirt work and whatnot such that it doesn't drain into those natural waterways and it will drain into the the sand oil interceptors so pollutants into minger creek and and surrounding tributaries um will not we won't be posing an issue on that regard But we do understand and, and we are hearing your concerns. That is, you know, the, the nature of this discussion and this meeting. Um, anybody else, anything else that we, we can cover here? I just, I mean, I, I, I thank you for um, coming forward and presenting this and um, I I still don't agree with it but I, I appreciate you bringing it forward and um, I just the right in right out curb cuts everything that that um, you're talking about you I just want to remind you that PNC and city council will have the final say on all of that. 
So, I mean, that may be your plan, but the final say will lay with them and they may not allow those curb cuts. I'm just, even the right in, right out, uh, all of that subject to approval. But I appreciate you bringing it forward and um, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, too. Uh, we appreciate your concerns and, and voicing your opinions here. LJA Engineering and Christian Brothers hears you loud and clear. Um, and again, we appreciate your time here this evening. Uh, yes. So as um, as Mark was saying, we did have a few um, meetings. We have a subcommittee that met with them this week. They are not going to be on the March 4th uh, PNZ meeting yet. They're still working through some of the comments from the subcommittee. They met with a city, con uh, a city council member from the district to try to um, see exactly how they can approach this to be better received by the community. So they're trying to see how that's going to be um, received and working through the comments still. So it's not going to be on uh, the next PNG, PNZ agenda. Um, that being said, the meeting is being recorded. I forgot to start the recording right in the beginning, but uh, I do have notes from the beginning of the meeting. So we'll have the summary with the notes and also this part of the meeting. Anybody else has more questions, comments about uh, what Mr. Santos was presenting about the project for um, Christian Brothers? I don't hear any. Somebody's talking, you're muted. Thank you all. We hear you, community. <laughs> Thank you all very much. And Thank you, Mark. Okay. Thank you, guys. And uh, if you have any questions, you can email us in the planning department or you can email Mark directly. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.